Oh, thanks, Gemma. Thanks so much, Faith Walk ladies. It was really lovely to be here. And and I'm glad you asked me, Gemma, you know, because I'm a new believer. So it's um, when you see, first see things, you think, well, what do I know about that? What can I share about that? What? You know, but it makes you go and look, you know. So I'm grateful, Gemma, because I had a couple of days to, to look and, and think and, and be in the word. So, yeah, I'll just cover the meeting in the blood of Jesus, Father God, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, be with us just now. Amen. And, uh, yeah, so it, the, the title was Taking on Challenges in Ministry and Using Your Spiritual Gift Things. Um, so, yeah, I kind of jumped around a bit, but... Um, is just going to um, say uh, the words in John 4.10, Jesus tells us, um, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water, he tells the woman at the well, you know, and he goes on later to speak about eternal life. Um, and then, he says, oh, that wasn't actually the one I was looking for, but <laughs> it was the it was the one about um, uh, uh, I have to go. I have to go. Uh, <laughs> now I can't find the bit. <laughs> Jesus says, you know, it's good for you. It's good for you that I go. I think it's in John. Yeah, John, here it is. I'll go consult the book lens consult the bible always the best way to start john 16 john 16 verse 6 john 16 he's speaking to his disciples i have told you these things so that you won't abandon your faith for you will be expelled from the synagogues and the time is coming when those who kill you will think they are doing a holy service for god this is because they have never known the father or me Yes, I'm telling you these things now so that when they happen, you will remember my warning. Uh, uh, that's not actually the bit, um, but uh, sorry. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so he says, uh, but now I am going away to the one who sent me and not one of you is asking where I am going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. So this is this is amazing news for us. This is amazing news for us that Jesus, when he went, you know, he sent his Holy Spirit. He told us it would be more, the word is, in some of the versions is expedient. It's to your advantage. He told us, which is incredible. We think it's to your advantage that um, I go so the Holy Spirit can come. And... Um, it says um, I went and had to. Uh, I, I consulted a bit at uh, Andrew Womack, who I love, um, and um, he tells us, um, well, you know, which we know. But once that, once you're born again of, of the of the Spirit of the Spirit of God, once we're born again, every believer is given spiritual gifts by the Holy Spirit. Um, Every person that is in the body of Christ has been given spiritual gifts. This is the same Holy Spirit. Um, and um, it says in um, it says in 1 Corinthians, spiritual gifts. Now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about the special abilities the Spirit gives us, I don't want you to misunderstand this. You know that when you were still pagans, you were led astray and swept along in worshipping speechless idols. So I want you to know that no one is speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. So there's one Holy Spirit, you know, one Spirit for all that comes to us. There are different, but there are different kinds of service. And we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it's the same God who does the work in all of us. 
A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. That's really crucial. The spirit, the spiritual gifts are for helping each other um, in the body of Christ. To one person, the spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the one spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophecy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift a person should have. So not everybody will, you know, we have all got the, the, the gift, but not necessarily that you'll, you know, be, be really excelling in, in um, gifts. And um, I guess that's another topic for finding out what your gifts are. <laughs> that's probably another, um, another topic. But, um, and, and uh, another little quote I like that Andrew Womack says, if your life isn't supernatural, it's superficial. And I thought, wow, <laughs> you know, if your life's not supernatural, it's superficial. And, um, you know, so there's lots of these spiritual gifts. Um, and so like our Lord uh, says there, Administrate. These can also include administration, giving, exhorting, um, shepherding, um, teaching, serving, showing mercy, evangelism, um, as well as the ones mentioned there. Um, speaking in tongues, prophecy, and discernment, wisdom, and knowledge. Um, and it says. Uh, but scripture emphasizes that Christians are to use their spiritual gifts to minister to others and that the power to use these gifts comes from the Holy Spirit. And um, the spirit, spiritual gifts are one of the manifestations or indications that the Holy Spirit's presence in the life of a believer. Um, so these help us in our service for Christ with the mission for um, the gospel, to take the gospel out. But it's... It's um, as opposed to the fruits of the spirit, which are more like for our, our attitude personally. These are these are gifts within the ministry and and in the body of Christ. And just after. Um, oh, that wasn't our Lord that said that. Actually, sorry, that was Paul. That was Paul that was um, speaking there. About the spiritual giftings. Um Oh, I've lost a bit in the Corinthians. Yeah. And then after that bit that Paul says about all the various um, giftings, he goes on to speak about the body. You know that the church is the body. Um, and so that it says um, that, yeah, so that, um, you know, that the eye, the eye wouldn't function as an ear, you know. So you and I all have we'll have gifts but you know we have to be some people might need to be guided and helped into them and um so that's a little bit about spiritual giftings um and so i wanted to just have a quick look at the uh, into the book of acts just to see what challenges the early church were having um and how they were applying what they had. So in the early church, in the early church, where was it? They had, yeah. Um, so they had quite a few. They had obviously a lot going on in the book of Acts, just incredible. Um, so it, they had um, the issues of pride and greed and hypocrisy, which came up with um, Ananias and Sapphira um, trying to look holy, you know, not giving all the money when there was no call to lie. Um, and then they had um, bickerings broken out between the food not getting distributed right. Um, 
So there was an Act 6. The, 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 there were certain widows who felt they weren't getting uh, looked after. So this was some challenges the early church had. I mean, they were meeting huge persecution. I mean, you know, getting jail, arrested, you know, we, we know what happens to, to um, Stephen and James. I mean, uh, you know, these were the these were the challenges, and then divisions in the divisions as well. Um, Paul and Barnabas separate over an issue with about uh, John Mark, um, and then um, and then false teachings in the early church in the Book of Acts. Um, they're dealing with false teachings, and they're they're saying, you know, that the um, that the Gentiles had to be uh, circumcised, and 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 there's and Paul saying, you know, why would we put these burdens? Why would we put the burdens on the Gentiles, and um, we couldn't keep the law ourselves, you know? So, what kinds of challenges? So, you know, in the early church, you know, they needed wisdom. I mean, I mean, they had they had, um, uh, um, yeah, you know, they were they were using you know, the gift, <laughs> they, they were, you know, using wisdom to put, um, to elect the seven people um, to administer the food, you know, so they're shepherding and they're, you know, because the other, the others needed to be sharing the gospel. So they had to have people taking on the challenge of doing the day-to-day -day stuff. So, um, so these were some of the challenges um, in the early church. And then, um, just 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 thinking about my own uh, church here um, in Inverness, you know, we're not facing um, we're not facing, thank God, you know, the, the persecution um, that the early church is facing. You know, we, we've got much, much tamer, much tamer uh, difficulties, you know, um, and, and, and the ministry, it says it says um, but the ministry, uh, the ministry is the activity carried out by Christians to express and spread our faith, uh, to carry forth Christ's mission uh, to, of the gospel and to go and make disciples. Um, so, you know, my little, little church in Inverness, which is really small, you know, we only meet actually the first and the third Sundays of the month. So, we're in the middle of praying and discussing what to do on those other Sundays to be out in the community, maybe go leafleting, you know, so that we are not just, you know, in church and building each other up, but actually going out. Um, we go up on the high street once a week on a Thursday and just do some street evangelism. <laughs> that happened the first week I joined the church. They said, we'll see you next Thursday come up on the high street you know I said, oh, well. you know um and um we don't have a kid or youth group we're praying and praying for a for a family to come into our church we don't have a, 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 we only have a few kids and and, and they can't join because the mum's so busy with work so we're praying for a family to come and take on the kids and youth um, worker we've got problems with um discipleship you know who's going to take and uh, who who can be there to disciple and um, people. Um, so yeah, there's um, there's a few things, and you you will have you know many things um, uh, ch and challenges to take on. And and uh, yeah, I was just going to share with you like um, before I wind up. Um, so they they asked our church everybody to come forward if you wanted to be part of the ministry and if you wanted to help. To come and you, so I went up and asked them. Um, Sam, who does the tech, he does the overhead projector. He moves the overhead projector when the songs come on. He sets up all the stuff. So I thought, it's actually. I mean, it's not. I I I I break everything. I touch. <laughs> it's not my thing, right? But I thought, well, you know, the man needs a holiday some weeks, and it would be good for me to learn. I thought this could be the thing, and then. After a few weeks of that, Jackie, the pastor's wife, said to me one week, Lindsay, could you come in at 20 past 10 and help with the 
greeting at the door today and she never mentioned anything about Sam so I just took it <laughs> I just took it that I've been moved from the tech to the greeter to I think she gave me a she gave me a uh, she gave me a lanyard and it's a uh, communications no connections connections a uh, person or something connections team so I basically get to stand at the door and gabber and and you know but they said that this was better this must be where I'm better suited you know get her away from the tech stuff you know because I would break it so anyway these are these are I just trust the other people because it will guide me and and is in and giftings and um I'm praying, really praying just now, guys, for the gift of speaking in tongues. I don't speak in tongues, and I really would, I really would like this gift. I would like this gift. I'm praying for it. I'm praying for it um, and to interpret. Um, and so, um, yeah, I, I just, I'm grateful. I, um, Grateful to be here with you, ladies. I'm, you still have loads more, um, yeah, to talk about the gifts. It says that the gifts are a supernatural ability that's beyond myself. It's beyond me. It's be it's a gifts beyond myself. They're not talents. It's not skills. These are supernatural gifts to build up the church and build each other up. So I'm going to leave it there, Gemma. And uh, I'll thank you very much. God bless. Oh, amen. Bless you, sister. That was so lovely to hear you and just see how where your knowledge has grown over time and how much you've learned. And there's some of your sisters from Cornerstone who know you. And, oh, it's been such a blessing to see you grow on your journey. And I was thinking about this gift in the other day and it, it finally hit me that obviously um, the scripture says that um, he he knitted us together in our mother's womb. And, and that's when I believe like that Holy Spirit showed me then it was like, that's when he decided like what all of our giftings were. Do you know what I mean? That's when he picked like, oh, Lindsay, you're going to have the gift of mercy or you're going to have this or you're going to have the, the gift of knowledge or and this is when as he was knitting us together that's when he put these in in and and and, and that's but as time goes on as we go in the world the world hardens our heart and it damages us and trauma and and things happen to us that really impact our spiritual gifting so like an example i've shared this before um the gift of prophecy that can be ruined with paranoid thinking so like we start thinking like oh i'm so like start thinking actually i'm just being paranoid about that like we're not meant to share um negative things if it's prophecy to somebody so it counteracts two different things it's the positive and the negative so i think that's where the the confusion comes in as we go along in our worldly journey our gifts get like damaged so when we come to know jesus on our walk it's really important that we ask him well like you said you're praying for that gift of tongues will you give this father give me give me this gift and do you know what i mean and if that is our gift in then he then it will be revealed and more will be revealed and with the series that um Isaac Kabul was doing I learned um from him as well and I never forget this that we are given two or three main spiritual giftings they're our main ones and then we can work um on the others so like if we haven't been like for example if we haven't been given the gift of mercy or knowledge or something 
we can learn that over time as we go along our walk with Christ, but they might not be our initial natural ones. So it's really important. Like, don't think, oh, because I haven't got a gift. Like, oh, I'm never going to have that one because he can give them to us at different times. Or God's really, really, really funny sometimes with the things that he does. You're like, oh, why? Why are you doing this now? So like, we never know what's going to happen and his timing is always perfect like we said the same thing today I was saying we were saying about um either doing safeguarding and then this was like a year ago and then today he got an email through from our church for a safeguarding course and I'm like see that's God's timing isn't it Do you know what I mean you can't make this stuff up as when it when we want it it doesn't ever happen so I loved what you had to say. Um, I was going to bring Gemma in to speak, but she's having a bit of difficulty at the moment. Michelle's just joined. I'll let her in. If anyone wants to come in, please put your hand up. Hi, Michelle. We're just um, um, we're just we're just um on a topic of our spiritual giftings and um taking challenges in ministry with our spiritual giftings if if you if you want to share you can come in you're more than welcome um to join us um yeah if anyone wants to come in oh, I'll let oh, in and come in in a minute to... oh bless you hi guys <laughs> go on Gemma come in I think he's kind of whimpering a little bit now so I'm just having a night ladies where I put my son in his own bed, so he's been screaming hysterically for ages, but um, he's kind of settling down now. But yeah, thank you, Lindsay. That was really, really great to listen to. And um, it's so important, isn't it, that we understand, first of all, that we've been each been called by God for a specific plan and purpose, that we are to serve Christ. Now that he's called us, we are bond servants to Christ. Um, and I think it's really important to really understand the value that we have in Christ first and foremost. And then I, I feel like it's been a process. Like first, it's taken a long time to, to believe, you know, that I'm called and that I'm chosen and that I'm favoured and that I'm accepted. So I had to like weed out all, get through all of the rejection barriers and all of that. And really, and now it's like, wow, now I'm sort of coming into my, into that fullness of like, you know, I can start to identify the gifts that I have and really start to believe in, in the call on my life and that, you know, I'm, I'm doing this to serve God. And um, so sort of bat bat battering off like, you know, fear of man and what man thinks of me and what, you know, old friends think of me and then trying to stand firm in this new identity and um, identify the gifts, you know, because ultimately... When we stand before God, it will be, you know, you will just be interested in, you know, did we do the will of the Father? And the will will be based on the gifts, the talents, and what did we do with what he gave us? Um, so it's really vital, you know, to I to begin to identify them and be able to serve in like your local communities or your church um, or wherever God, God places you to start building yourself up and becoming confident in those giftings that he's given us. So I was just reading, I was reading, um, this was a, hang on, this was Kenneth Hagen. Um, I downloaded um, a teaching thing that he had and he was just saying, so Christ's provision, so as you said, Lindsay, you know, Christ in, in Ephesians, it talks about the provision that Christ has made for his church with him being the head and us being the body. Um, and that, you know, he qualifies the called. So God, he, he calls the unqualified and qualifies them. Um, <clears throat> so it's just talking about the divine call on our lives. So I think first and foremost, it's really crucial to um, get to that place in your walk where you understand like you know the value that you have in God's eyes and that he has called you for a specific plan and purpose because I think today so many Christians they get a bit lost with even getting to that step that level of believing they are really valuable and worthy to God and that they have a unique 
plan and purpose and we can kind of as Christians wander aimlessly through this life and be very confused but actually if we just keep that main objective which is you know we need to serve Christ and serve the kingdom because he said didn't he um seek seek my righteousness and everything else will be added um but yeah I suppose when you're trying to you know um also you've got the worldly aspect you know you're trying to get through your daily routine your daily life it can be it can be quite hard to balance everything that I, I find but um so yeah but God can just use you like I, I've identified um I know my number one main gift is evangelist it's just like in my blood it's like I can't keep quiet and God will always set up these little situations where I have to speak up with boldness and um you know lay hands and pray for people it's not something that I feel like scared or to shy away from it's I'm, I'm, I'm it's just in me it's like it's like you say it's supernatural and it doesn't come from me it, it's just something comes over me like it's in as Jeremiah said like his bones just um he said his bones burned with and he couldn't he couldn't quench the fire even if he wanted to um and I've noticed like Gemma yours is you do you're very good at all the admin side of things organization and that's what your test came back you know and confirmed because we did a we did a test last week confirming what our ministry gifts are so it's just important that we can help encourage each other and identify identify those gifts but it's also important what this teaching I was reading was saying that it can be dangerous to try and where is it hang on where's it gone uh, yeah so it's just talking about being faithful to the call and that it, it's dangerous to try and um like for example your your call may not be uh, for example a pastor or someone at the pulpit but so many people can't sometimes desire that because they like that acknowledgement they like you know maybe that power but it can be very dangerous to assume a role in your um which is not what you're really called for so it's important that we really seek god you know for what for what where he wants to place us um and sometimes it is a, a case of just stepping out in faith for example i've heard somebody say you know uh, was it joyce meyer she said that she didn't actually know there was a period of her time that she didn't really know but when she started helping out in church before obviously she was on her path to become um, a teacher of the word or a leader she helped out in children's ministry once and she just knew that she is not maternal she doesn't have that maternal instinct and she just could not you know do children's ministry and that so I think sometimes it's okay to try things out but I'm talking about more of the serious roles like you know really believing you're called to be a pastor and and that's not really your call that can be dangerous um because you won't have the back in you know of heaven behind you in in if you if you go down that, that wrong path um yeah so some of the giftings i was just studying was um the apostle uh, you've got um so this the fivefold ministry so it was let me just go back to this sorry i should have had this separate on um the fivefold ministry, which is the apostle of, sorry, my internet keeps, um, my internet keeps going down here. Oh, it keeps, you. But anyway, yeah, the five, the faith mind, uh, fivefold ministry. And then from that, we got those subsets of um, ministering gifts underneath them. So we have to first identify from the fivefold ministry what we fall into, what category, isn't it? And then from there, is that correct? We, and then from there, we we identify the, the spiritual gifts within that that role. Is that correct? Amen. And then does anyone know if that's truly correct? I don't want to be preaching something that's not. I'm trying that's to remember. Sure. Michelle's I, hand up. Maybe she can shed some light on that. Michelle, come in, sister. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know um, specifically if there's any particular order per se, um, but what I was going to say is, you know, when we think about ministry and we think about our spiritual gifts, you know, um, one of the things that has been, I think, my greatest discovery in my journey is understanding identity 
um, and understanding in that place of identity what comes with it, which is the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Um, and so one of the things that I've come to learn is that as you know, a bond servant, as a child of God, as um, one who has been saved by Christ, we have to learn to identify with the kingdom we come from. Um, and that will enable us to conduct ourselves, um, display ourselves in different ways at given moments. So one of the things I've seen is that you know, back in the day, I used to be very much about, you know, doing the gift questions and, you know, trying to identify if I'm an exhorter, if I'm a, if I'm a, a, a teacher, you know, trying to look at the different offices and see where I fit into. But I found that sometimes um, that just, it didn't necessarily like give the clarity that I needed personally in, in my own journey. So when I began to take my eyes off that and just kind of lean on the Holy Spirit, I began to get more clarity in my relationship with the Holy Spirit on how I function, you know. So what I do is I try to be more like Jesus every day. So if we look at our example, Jesus is our example. He didn't say, oh, I'm a teacher or he didn't say I'm an apostle. He didn't say, I'm, you know, or any of these offices, you know, he didn't say, oh, right now I'm going to use the gift of healing. All he did was go about doing good, just teaching people you know, trying to bring the good news everywhere he went. And in that place, he was able to express the father's heart. And so what I, I like to think about when I think about ministry and I think about the spiritual gifts, I understand that the Holy Spirit will use me in any way he chooses to at any given moment. So it could be in my role as a mother, it could be in my role as a sister, it could be my role as a friend, you know, exhorting somebody, motivating someone, praying, you know, ask, you know, leaning in for healing. I don't, um, I try not to make myself be confined to a specific gift. Rather, I surrender and yield to being used by the Holy Spirit, which means that at any given moment, you could be operating in any of those gifts. You know, the Lord might give you the ability to prophesy or translate um, tongues, you know? So I feel like for me, anyway, you know, I, don't, I know everyone's different and everyone's journey and process is different. I feel like, you know, it's about us understanding who we are in Christ and understanding what is available to us and knowing that we come from a kingdom that is way above and so much bigger, so much stronger, so much more purer than the kingdom we live in. And it's always tapping into that kingdom to pull down, you know, as my sister Gemma said, you know, it's about seeking first the kingdom of God and righteousness, and then all else will be added on. That means at any given time, you could be used by God to do anything. So yeah, that's, that's my little, little drop in the ocean this evening. <laughs> oh bless you Rochelle thank you that was more than a couple drops there bless you sister that was so powerful um the work of the ministry it's all about the work of the ministry and sometimes we're like we're in a situation where it's like oh god oh, I've got to do the work of the ministry oh no I don't really want to do this but it's the right time and you're like oh no and it can be really uncomfortable sometimes that sometimes you just have to step out in faith and just do it when you're in that moment, you know what I mean? And um, press in and that's that's the blessing. Blessing of the Holy Spirit, thank God, because otherwise it would be really terrifying. So thank God for the Holy Spirit. Okay, ladies. So if anyone else wants to come in, put your hand up and we're going to go into a time of prayer can i ask a question yes michelle sure so i wanted to ask with everyone that's on here how many ladies have actually got their own ministry up and running so they could raise their hands like you know you have a ministry or something that god has called you to and you're walking in it and how you know how have you found that process because you know it is it is challenging and it is you know, nerve wracking. But what I find is, like I said to someone that um, over the last couple of days, you know, um, I went to a retreat, um, a Christian retreat in um, Reading, and it was really amazing. And one of the things that she struggled with is that she felt like the Lord had given her, you know, an idea of a business that she's supposed to start and it wasn't just a business, but it's a business and ministry combined. And she was feeling nervous 
you know, because you're like, I don't know what to do. Like, I know God has given me this dream, but I don't know how to stay with it. I don't know how to step out in it. And I said to her, well, when, when, you were, when she was telling me this, I said, you know, when I see you, I see that the one thing that is the greatest challenge for you at this particular junction is that you don't really, you don't trust God as much as you think you do. And what I would suggest to you, you know, to her at that time was she should like see herself falling from clouds into the hands of God. So like just dropping back and knowing that no matter where she falls from, God will always catch her. And so that, oh, wow, like she's never thought of it like that, that she thought she did trust God, you know? And what I, I realized, like when, you know, I think it was Gemma that just said that just now, when we step out, we need to understand that we're not stepping out alone. There is always more that are with us than there's more than anybody that can be against us. There's so much more. So the reason why I'm asking is, you know, like if you have a ministry now, what are the challenges that you're facing? Maybe we can kind of look at that and make it more personal. Amen. I think uh, most of these people on here just attend um, Faith Walk, Michelle. That's uh, they've got or they, they they've got their own churches. Um, yeah, Maxine, do you want to come in? You got your hand yeah. up. Yeah, I have. Um, what um, Sister Michelle asked is, God's called me to. Uh, it wasn't my idea to um, to go um, into my, into a library. It was to go somewhere and to. And I've got a load of leaflets, a little booklet it's called the Book of John, you know, from the Book of John. And I've and um to to bring the leaflets and to study the Book of John. So um I'll have to get some adverts because at the moment it's only me and a sister, a friend, she's not on Facebook, but she phoned, she phoned me. God told her to phone me just when I was doing the that third Bible study, and no one came. <laughs> So I'm just studying. Um, well, we just um, we just in the library. She's uh, phoning me, and um, we're, we're we're just studying the Bible. We're talking about different things that's happening. You know, that's all. That's all. That's kind of ministry, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Amen. That is, yeah, that's amen. What yeah. it's about, Maxine. Stepping out in faith, doing things that the Lord has called you to do. Give me that, please doing things that the Lord has called you to do rather like sometimes our flesh doesn't want to do them things does it it's like no, no. we don't want to go no. and sit in the library and read the bible come away just Gerald, to, do you want to yeah. come back in yeah i was just going to say something that always um bothers me a lot is um because of the passion that I, I, you know, as believers, we have this passion for Christ and for his kingdom and to reach other people. And I know it's not necessarily about using the social media platform, but I've always felt um, it's almost like a fear has always has held me back. And then, but also because, you know, being a parent with a toddler and I, I've got a lot of stuff I'm working on, like at home and trying to get him in a routine and try and get, you know, just follow the order for getting getting my like career sort of what my work back on track and everything like that. So it's like I have this passion and I've this vision to do use my social media on a bigger platform, but um, it's I I just feel like I'm at a stage in my life where I know I couldn't be consistent with it, and so it's kind of like if you've got that continuous passion, I don't know if that's God telling you. Or maybe it's just not the right time. But also, because there is, I still do get crippled with which I'm working through in my healing. Um, fear of man, fear of um, rejection, fear of, you know, posting something for God. You know, not, you no, know, it's not about the likes, but when you've suffered rejection, it's like these things, the enemy can plague your mind. So it's kind of, I feel like there's still more healing that I have to do to be able to do that in its fullness you know um but it's just a passion that I have uh because I feel like I would rather use my social media platforms even but I'm trying not to go even go on there as much because I need to be focused like my day-to-day -day routine with my son and everything but I just would rather if I'm going to post anything I want it to it's like you know you've got all this knowledge about the Lord and truth and you're like I can't keep it to myself like you're bursting to keep 
sharing it and um so I just feel like I've got this great passion but I just don't know how to yeah I don't want it to start taking over my first ministry which I've had to learn tonight through my parenting practitioner that you know my son and getting him in a routine and that and I realize I have I don't always get the priorities right you know I don't always get my priorities right and so it's kind of like oh god I've got this passion for you but my first ministry is my home and the ch- and getting my child in a routine and that so yeah it's just something it always plays me I'm always feel like oh I've got this passion and I don't want to stand before God and I didn't really use it to the full potential so it does confuse me a lot amen well Joe won't be young for forever you'll be have many years of freedom soon so Chloe your hand was up did you want to come in yeah yeah I wanted to come in I wanted to apologize I didn't hear I went to take up um the baby up to bed came back down my laptop had crashed but I wanted to share on and the calling um the thing of calling because I keep going to God like God what's my calling what's my calling and I just hear him say you're doing your calling you're walking your calling and it's been a mother and a parent you know you need to focus on that so he really reels me in but I believe that he's he's teaching me a lot along the way before I step out into ministry work um but right now like Gemma just said my ministry is my family amen amen I think we were talking about that today and it's like Sometimes as a mom of young children, you want to go out and do all these exciting things and duh, feel like you're saving everyone. And yeah, it's cool just to be in the house and just looking after them young kids and being present and being available and doing the routine and the day-to-day mundane tasks, what we're so blessed to be able to do, but it's still like it can be a battle sometimes and it's really it's we have to acknowledge that um so yeah okay Michelle do you want to come in and then we're just close do you want to pray for us when you finished and then we can close up sister okay no problem okay so just wanted to say ladies just to encourage you there is a time and season for everything so don't feel pressured you, you know when we go out we're not the ones saving god is the one using us to save so he will send us out at the right time to the right people number two the bible talks about the fact that one plants another waters but it's god that brings the increase so whatever you do no matter how big no matter how small no matter how insignificant it may seem those things you put them in the ground as seed and god will water them and he will increase them so just keep doing what you're doing keep trusting god don't put no pressure on yourself you know when jesus walked on the earth he had no pressure he just said i'm doing what i see my father do and i'm seeking to do my father's will and that's all you need to do if the season for you right now is to be a mom to be a great wife do all of that to the best of your ability when the time comes god will shift you into the next season and you keep going forward you understand so just to encourage all of you so i'm going to pray now Okay, so Father, we just want to say thank you. I thank you for the life of every single woman on this call, every woman that is represented in Faith Walk Ministries. I thank you for their lives. I thank you for their families. I thank you for their homes. Father, I thank you for every role that you have placed them in, whether it be as sisters, as wives, as mothers, as friends, as ministers, Father, Lord God, evangelists, prophets, teachers, pastors, healers, you know, people that have wisdom, whatever gifting, whatever ability, whatever thing you've placed in them from the beginning of time. Father, I thank you that you are activating them in those callings, but you are the one that is taking them by their hand and lead them in the place they should go. I thank you that the Holy Spirit will continue to be the light that brightens the path that you have set before them and that they will not be made to be distracted. They will not be made to be pressurized. They will not be made to go away that is not yours. I thank you that they will continue to hear the voice of their shepherd, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord, our savior. And I thank you, Father, Lord God, for these ones, Lord, that are coming into new seasons, even in the place that you're transitioning them into the new. I thank you that you are continuously guiding them, leading them, counseling them, healing them, clothing them, renewing them, strengthening them, giving them everything that they need from heaven to continue to live the life that you have called them to. And so, Father, even as they sleep, Father, I thank you for peaceful rest. I thank you that they will wake up refreshed. I thank you for dreams where you're showing them their future, 
and the promises and the plans that you have for them. I pray that you will continue to fill them afresh with fresh oil, Father, Lord God, fresh oil right now, pouring from their heads, going right down to the soles of their feet. I thank you that everything you have placed in these women, Father, they will not only live it, they will fulfill it, and they will have a cause to glorify you every day of their lives because they will be for signs and for wonders in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, Father, we just say thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Sister Michelle. That was lovely prayer. Bless you. Been a wonderful meeting, ladies. This brings us to um, the close of our seven, seven week series. Um, I'm not sure what we're doing after this, but we will be here next Wednesday. So please come along and join us. And um, yeah, we'll see you next week, ladies. God bless you all. Thanks, Michelle, for your wisdom. Really blessed tonight. Thank you. God bless. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Mama, can I do my other Yes.